Okay, guys, JH. Welcome to practice tea again. So that noodle idea is a great idea. Can't wait to get my audio back. They're shouting all the time. <laughs> and talking when I'm facing away from the camera. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Something that really makes channel lock and gives you great stability at impact is something that is counterintuitive to all of us. In most golf swings, as we start down, we want to stand up. And there's even a lot of that tour in thing, push out of the ground. Well, I think that does two things. It creates a stability problem and it creates a rotational effect problem. So as soon as you push up, you want to rotate as well. Now in channel lock, you don't want to do that. And of course, what I'm finding in my channel lock now is that I want my feet on the ground every single solitary shot I, I hit. And I want lots of weight going down into the ground, pushing into the ground. So how do I get weight pushing into the ground? If you just stand up and try and push weight into the ground with your feet without applying mass down on top of your feet, you can't do it. Your feet can't apply any pressure. You have to get the mass moving into your feet to push your foot into the ground. So what, what I've been doing and I see it in Matty Gray's swing and he's a really strong hitter. Matty Gray, Bill Phillips's offsider at MMI Golf. Matty's a really good ball striker and very long. And, and what Matty does on the downswing Matty actually loses almost a foot of height in the downswing. Matty does this. Matty's a here, and then he drops down like that. Now, Matt Norman used to do that to an extent, not quite as much as Matt, but Matt's a really good striker. And I think the reason he's a good striker is because he's forcing that, that mass down into the ground, taking the hands with it, and then the hands are sort of getting a rebound accumulation effect. It's sort of pushing pressure into the hands and then they fire. Now as you're throwing the club away, you can go with that club head. Because when you're thinking about throwing a club away, you're trying to get the club head to the ball. So you go to the ball. Okay, now technically, and from a geometry point of view, you would be reducing your radius. And, it, and if you drop down dramatically, it went like that, and you went forward, you wouldn't be able to straighten your arm and, you, and you'd lose your radius efficiency. And if we look at Matt Gray now, Matt Gray's got a lot of, he said he's, he's really trying to throw the club. And if you watch him post impact, Matt's like this post impact. It's not, not like this stuff that we see in a conventional golf swing that we've all had here. It's not like that, it's this. Even Billy Phillips now. Billy Phillips has got an extreme version of that. Bill Phillips at, at Impact now is like this guy. It's a reverse chicken wing. That's a chicken wing, it's a reverse one. He's got the lead arm corralled here and the club is just doing this, which means he must be throwing it away dramatically to get that effect. And he's trying to buttress the hit, trying to get this stationary when we hit here. But Matty goes down. And I gotta tell you, when I used to do Mo Norman, I, I used to really go down. I used to tell my students that feel like you're going to put your, 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 your buttocks on the ground. You're going to lay an egg on the downswing. Get really feel like you're going down. Okay, Mo went down, but he went forward. He lateralized. So he negated a little bit of that loss of height. We don't do that, but we, but we can get away with going down as long as we stay back here and we fire our hands out there. Now guys, I was doing a little bit of it yesterday afternoon. I knew I wouldn't get away without a plane coming across. I was doing a bit of it yesterday afternoon and it was so windy here. And, and I was hitting five irons, guys, like unbelievably strong into the wind. Like almost going normal distance.
at least the wind blows a bit of that sound away. So what I'm saying, guys, just try this. When you get your connection and you get back here, just try and drop and maintain the drop as you throw the club away. Try and feel like you've got those real soggy knees. Now I'm really going to sit into this shot. It's five on, guys. I'm really going to sit into this. Very windy. Like 50 k's. I'm going to sit into my knees. Unbelievable. And I hope the video, I hope that audio picks up the impacts there. Now guys, what I'm also doing is I'm getting back here as much as I can now. Oh, I mean, I'm super. I'm super closed. I, I'm not closed like that. I've just got this leg going back here. I do that because I want all my weight on that trail, that trail axis. And I can really get back into that trail axis the more I've got it back here. And not only that, it makes... It makes me, because I'm not going to come forward with that foot, I'm not going to drive forward like that. So being back here, I've got to extend that trail arm out to the ball, which gives me a great opportunity to throw the club head on a, on a straightened uh, trail arm coming into the ball and post impact. That's what I like about being back here. As soon as I bring this back here, I brought the fulcrum the more this comes back here, the more the fulcrum moves this way of my trail arm. And I can sit down then, but I've got to stretch that trail arm. And doing that negates the loss of radius, I think. Well, I certainly get a beautiful contact when I do that. So I'm getting in here, guys, and then I'm just pulling this back here. Now, this foot's, you know, probably... 18 inches back. That toe's 18 inches back from there. It's back here. Amazingly, so I'm, I'm back here. And this lead foot is un, 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 unweighted, unloaded. Watch how hard I can hit this. Wow. I'll talk about the release in a minute. Here we go here. I'm in here, the foot, bring the lead foot up, drop that back, sit here, hip lock, Guys, I'm, see how much I'm sitting into those knees now? Really sitting into the soggy knees. Soggy, boggy knees. The more I go down, the more I, more I go back, and the more I can fire my arm out, and the more I can do that. You look at me, post-impact, I'm like this. Because that's how I want to be. Matty Gray's like that. Billy Phillips is like that. We're all like that because we're tosses. We're throwing it. Here I am, I've measured. Hip lock. Just get down to it, guys. Just get down to it. Get down and boogie. Look at this. Matty Gray, if you watch Matty Gray in slow motion, he drops, you know, 10 inches on the downswing. But, and that's how he gets that whip into the shot. He has huge whip in his shots. That's why I can really motor the ball, because he really whips it. A lot of throw away there. Wow, this grass is brutal. <laughs> this is brutal. Just feeling like I'm just I'm just dropping in the downswing. Probably probably nowhere near what I in actuality, as to what I feel.
but the more you you do drop down, particularly if you drop down with your trail buttock, the more the club will, will underplay. It just does that close. Come on, 2019 tempo James, come on. There it is guys, that's 2,900. Wow. It's effortless. And, and because I've always been quick from the top, it's really hard for me to just have that gradual little drop, soft drop before I fire the hands. You can't fire the hands immediately from the top. You've got to have the little soft drop which gets you in the channel and forces the weight down and then you can go after it. You can go after it so aggressively after that. Come on, James. 2019 temper. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to work on, is this temper. Because it's not me. Come on, James. And just that little subtle drop before I before I toss. Wow. I mean that was motor. Come on. If that other one had a turbo on it, that had two turbos on it. And guys, I'm trying to I'm trying to throw the head off the club. That's what I'm trying to do. It's amazing that you can hit the ball that straight with that much left to right uh, knockdown headwind. That just doesn't move. Now the release guys, remember, we're firing it, but we've got to fire it. When we do the wrist action, it's a natural throw down. Throw down. My great buddy, Billy Phillips. Billy, I was going to send you a personal video. Mate, I tell you what could help benefit you enormously. I mean, you're hitting it like a dart. But we can always hit the bullseye when we play darts, if we practice harder. Mate, what I think you should do, and heaven forbid to get you to change what you're doing because you're hitting it beautifully. But I think it would help you if, if in your own release coming down, you just fired that thumb down a little bit more that way. So that would give you a little bit more buttressing with that lead arm getting in that configuration as we fire the club past it rather than being in that configuration when you fire the club past it. I mean you're hitting it great at the moment, you've got a lot of throw away. But I think if you do that, you just as you come down just roll thumb it here. But but the hand goes past we roll thumb it, point the thumb that way. That just, that just straightens that lead arm momentarily at impact and just turns it that way, instead of this way. But Billy, Billy, you're not getting that. But I just saw it, I thought, wow. If, if Tinker could just do that a little bit more, I reckon, I reckon your speed will go through the roof. I mean, at the moment, you're getting a lot of pressure on the shaft here, Billy. You're getting a lot of wide radial distortion in your shaft, right there, off a very small swing base. So you're really pressuring the shaft. You're hitting it great. And to come back after that you know, eight or 10 day layoff and come back and just blitz it, that's fantastic. And 35 degree temperature. It's six o'clock in the afternoon here and it's still probably 95 or probably 90. 
Maybe it's cooled down a bit. Maybe it's about 80. Watch this guy. Watch this release. I can't believe how much zip I'm getting on the shot. I mean, it just zips it in. No movement. No movement on the ball. Two things I'm just working on at the moment for me is tempo and five o'clock nose and a little bit of hip lock. I want to feel when I hit it, guys, like I'm like that. That's what I want to feel like. That. That's the feeling. I feel like that. That's the feeling. Come on. Just like that. Big high power drill. Wow. Well, it's power drill, probably three yards. I don't sling it, guys. I just move it a little bit. Anytime you hit big roping, you know, push draws, they cost you distance. You know why? Because the ball's going away from the target. Go away and it's got to come back. You want to start it at the target. When Jack Nicholas and Trevino and those guys, their phase were just dead straight bullets and they just turned off to the right. Tiger Woods, dead straight bullet, just turns off to the right. They don't. They, they don't curve the ball like that with their fades. And the good draw guys, the guys who draw the ball, hit it dead straight and it just rifles over like that. That's a proper draw. And then you start right and comes back, so look. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. These guys say I'm a real strong drawer. You're actually a hooker. You're a hooker, baby. You're not a drawer, you're a hooker. Anything starts right and comes back to all. Draws dead straight and just falls off to the left. A little bit. Sam Snead told me that. He said, everybody thinks they hit draws. He said, most of the guys out there are hookers. He said, just, he said, you watch Hogan. He said, the ball was dead straight. Just fell off to the right. Just dead straight, just fell off to the right. He said, look at my ball flight. It's dead straight, just does that. So Snead said, just goes, just like that. He said, that's a hook. That's what he said. He said, that's a hook. People think they power draw it, they hook it. Come on, come on, Jack. Come on. Well, that's as good as old Jay's can hit. Okay, guys, I'm going to try and get some ball flight. Sun's getting low. Another 15 minutes, I think it'll be low, and I think I'll be able to hit the ball maybe on this line here. And the, and the sun should come across and pick the ball up with a bit of luck. So I'll see if I can do that. What else was I going to say? To oh, guys, when you when you're trying to when you get when you're getting the throw in the swing, do one thing from the top of the swing. Once you start the throw, just try and straighten that arm as early as you can. Just straighten it. Oh. That's where you get the speed. Don't 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 have a leisurely straightening of your arm. Once you get it, just try and straighten it as hard as you can. The more you straighten it, the more you're going to pressure the wrist to throw. Blech. I'll really straighten the arm. I haven't even been doing that today. And I said today, JH, when you go out, deliberately try and straighten that arm. Yay! Here. <laughs> Radial drive in martial arts, guys. Yay! Get that out, straighten it. Yeah. Get it out. Whoa. Straighten it. You can no power if you got <laughs> if you're doing that trying to hit someone with a belt, bent elbow. You've got to straighten that arm as much as you can by impact. If you do it a lot and you do it aggressively, <laughs> your elbow gets sore. You don't want to overextend it and you don't want to jolt extend it. You just want to extend it. Okay, this is a full extension elbow. A well, full extension trail arm very early. Oh. 
Oh my goodness. Guys, that's gone 40 feet higher than any shot I've hit today. You know why? Just had more speed. Just had more speed, guys. That was there with a five on. Now this is out of three inches of rock. And, and if Channel Lock's got a problem, guys, it's that it gets the club on the ground very early here. So it picks up the grass. The grass is long. It picks the grass up early because the club gets on the ball level so early. And, and it starts to pick up grass. That was unbelievable. That was a full early extension of that trail arm. And so was that. Wow. See guys, we just, you know, I said coming out, gonna do this, JH. Do it today, get some extension going. Really, because you're gonna stay back, so you wanna really get that arm out there. Guys, they're just, they're going, I don't know, probably 15, 18 yards longer into that wind, even though they're going high. It's like Nicholas in his heyday. Jack never knocked the ball down. No matter what the wind was, he just hit it up there. That wind has no effect on that height of that shot. It just gives us more ball speed. That was amazing. Amazing. And that was more amazing. They're so high for a five-on. Wow. Wow. They are just off the scale. Just trying to straighten it. We just forget. We forget. This, that's, uh, that's, we've, we've accumulated the power in those hinges. Get rid of that accumulation here. Martial arts guy is breaking the blocks of ice. <laughs> he wouldn't go in there with a bent arm. Whoa! Because he wants that arm to fire the hand past through the blocks of ice. Watch this guy, this is full extension of the trail arm. My body doesn't do anything in the golf swing other than support, support the arm swing now. See, my feet are down every time. I can't believe how high that's going. If we hit some shots down range, you might see it. I'm just trying to work out what would be the direction that we can see some that we can see some ball fly. I'll have to work this out. Now, maybe it's that way. I don't know. I'll work it out, guys. Wow, how high would that be?